Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Delphi Forum here in Athens. We have only 20 minutes, so I have to immediately welcome Mr. Burak Zugerkin, the ambassador of Turkey in Greece. Welcome, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, <clears throat> you often communicate that honesty is needed when it comes to the relations of the two countries, Greece and Turkey. So I wonder why you found Mr. Dendia's statements in Ankara a few weeks ago disturbing. Well, Turkish-Greek relationship uh, needs care. You need to look after the relationship. It's, a, it's not a kind of relationship that uh, goes on autopilot. Uh, you need to be gentle with each other, um, especially since we, we have just emerged from um, maybe a year, a uh, year's worth of uh, more dynamic than usual relationship. Um, some channels were closed, blocked, uh, but I can say that um, since the beginning of this year, I think we, we're doing better some channels that were blocked are now open. We've had uh, exploratory contacts, or whatever we call them now, regarding the Aegean and Mediterranean. Uh, we had political consultations. Mr. Minister went to Ankara. Uh, we are going to have a few more meetings um, that are uh, going to be of interest to you, I think. Um, so I think we need to talk to each other, not about each other, and not to third parties about each other. I think that's uh, the best way to go. Um, not shouting from the balcony, uh, no arm twisting. Honest dialogue will take us much further, because at the end of the day, it's the problems we're going to solve our problems. Not uh, third parties aren't going to solve our problems for you. And international law is there. The UN Charter is there. Uh, the Charter lists, uh, UN Charter lists uh, all the ways, the peaceful ways which disputes uh, can be handled. You know, it's negotiations, arbitration, facilitation, conciliation, etc., adjudication. So I think what we need to do is to not to have two one-way monologues, but a dialogue. And we can do it. Mm -hmm. So the channel has to be open. The door is open, as Mr. Dendias said this morning here in Delphi. So what are the next steps? I mean, do you envisage meeting at the highest level soon? And the question is, how soon? Well. I'm not in the habit of predicting, uh, of course, the movements of uh, the highest levels, but we need to prepare the ground, mm -hmm. I think. And what we're doing is just that. Uh, we need to make, uh, make it worthwhile mm -hmm. for our uh, ministers. <laughs> yes, for our ministers and uh, our leaders to meet. And we're working hard. Uh, I was today at the foreign ministry, at the Greek foreign ministry trying to um, uh, find projects and ways that uh, will take us forward in the relationship. In the summer, before the summer, I have to ask again. Not too far away. OK. I'll take this as an answer, of course. EU-Turkey relations are at an historic low point according to a, a recent MP's report, you know, claiming that the government of Turkey distanced itself from the European standards and values. In addition, as reported, provocative statements against the EU, against the EU members, and as well as a hostile foreign, foreign policy towards Greece and Cyprus did not help much. So how can Turkey prove that it still 
dedicated to its European perspective? It's a matter of perspective, really. If you're sitting in a, in a train and the other train starts moving, you never know if you're moving or it is moving. So from where we sit in Ankara, uh, we also have our grievances uh, towards the EU. And by the way, to answer your question properly, I think we should make a distinction between the EU mm -hmm. and Europe as a continent, as a, uh, a geographical, political, economic, social space. We're not uh, uh, EU members, but we have been in Europe shaping the destiny of Europe for the better part of the millennium. So we don't need any approval of our European credentials. It is not up to others. We are just as a Mediterranean country as we are European. We're a Balkan country, we're a Black Sea country, a Middle Eastern country, Caucasian country. Uh, so that's why we're worried about what happens in Palestine. That's mm -hmm. why we're worried about what happens in the Balkans, because the Balkans is not a foreign policy matter for us. Look, I mentioned the Balkans, and you mentioned the European Union. Before uh, uh, the European Union took in the Central and European, uh, Eastern European nations, EU itself was an external actor in that part of Europe. So, yes, EU and Europe uh, have um, uh, do coincide on, 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 on many aspects. There's an overlap, but it's not the same thing. But you are still interested. Yes, yes. It in is, this uh, perspective. Absolutely. That's a good question. It is a um, declared and sustained intention of successive Turkish governments to become full member of the European Union. Here, Elena, we are aware that it takes a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. to uh, align with the European uh, Union acquis. And we're ready to do that hard work. But what we're not ready uh, to accept is our membership bid to be seen as a, a window of opportunity or an occasion for some EU member states to advance their national agenda, which have nothing to do with accession. Mr. Ambassador, apart from the criticism against Turkey's decision to withdraw from the Istanbul Convention, the reason behind such a decision have never been clearly explained. So I'm asking you, why did your country had to pull out of the Istanbul Convention? Well, I'm glad you asked this question, because it upsets me to see how ready people are, uh, uh, um, how quickly people are ready to jump to conclusions, uh, how people are ready to judge. Now, in, in cases like this, you have to look at the object and purpose of an international instrument. And what is it in this case? It's the uh, prevention of violence against women, mm -hmm. children, domestic violence, etc. Mm -hmm. That's a very serious matter. Now, you have to ask yourself, is the convention the exclusive method of dealing with uh, such problems? Now, to take my argument to an absurd level, does it mean if you're not party to the convention, you don't care about violence against women. It's absurd. It's, it's, it's absolutely not true. Because finally, it is a convention of Europe, a Council of Europe convention. Of Europe. Yeah? So what happens if you're not a member of Council of Europe? You're obviously not party to the convention. So why yeah? did you decide to be a part of the Istanbul Convention at first, in the first side? Well, because the evolution of uh, the interpretation uh, we did not uh, agree with. Um, here, I don't think we're alone, by the way. Uh, you should ask six, or uh, I can't remember the, the number now, but uh, a few 
uh, members of the European Union itself who are not even party to the convention, who did not even sign it yet. So uh, thank you for asking. I do not uh, um, appreciate being singled out because there are a lot of countries out there within EU that are questioning the direction that the uh, uh, convention is taking. It's not about uh, the, uh, violence against women, prevention of etc. By no means I'm saying that we, are, we have solved the problem. Uh, but I, what I'm saying is you would be hard to find a representative of a country here to make, uh, to be able to make such a claim that they solved the problem of violence against women. Mr. Ambassador, Joe Biden has started his presidency by notably taking a harder line, a harder line on Turkey. I mean, the recognition of the Armenian genocide, expelling Turkey from the F-35 program. So what is your approach on the relation uh, between the two countries? And do you think that this is a new era? Well, as, as the young people say, it's complicated. Uh, I had the, the opportunity to, uh, to be posted to, to the United States. I lived in the US for a while, a couple of times for a few years. And if I remember correctly, uh, the Washington Monument contains a, a stone dedicated to the friendship uh, between the then Ottoman Empire and the young American Republic. I don't know if the stone is still there. It must be 170 years old. But since then, I'm sure a lot, lot of other plaques went up. Um, as with any long-term relationship, things happen. Uh, but don't forget, in a long analysis, don't forget that it was uh, either bilateral or through NATO our relationship with the United States that kept international order in this part of the world for 75 years. Uh, so grievances, yes, yes. Uh, we do have grievances, as in any relationship. We, uh, for example, as Turkey, we expect our allies, not just the United States, but in general, our allies, to be more sensitive, more forthcoming towards our security needs, especially where we live. Uh, I'm sure the Americans would have a few grievances of their own, uh, but you have to ask them. Uh, in any case, if it is a genuine partnership, and I think it is, because it's, it's based on uh, an approach uh, to the world, then a genuine partnership uh, has built-in mechanisms to address difficulties. Uh, it, it would be wrong to look at uh, just a moment in time uh, and to come uh, to some conclusions. In any case, look, uh, maybe we have 20 more seconds. Um, what I notice in, in, in Greece, I don't speak German at all, but I know one word. It's schadenfreude. I notice sometimes some people in, in, in Greece, not, not you, of course, it means uh, deriving pleasure, or taking satisfaction from an opponent's misfortunes. So sometimes I'm uh, directed questions uh, pointing out to the difficulties that we face as Turkey with third parties, with the European Union, with the United States, etc. Now, I put it to you as a learned uh, person. Would it be in Greece's interest to have a neighbor which feels at ease within the Western camp? with the European Union, with NATO? Or would it serve Greece's interests better if there is an alienated Turkey from the Western camp? Maybe we don't have enough time to discuss, but 
Maybe for next time, huh? I have enough time for <laughs> one last question, because this had been a terrible week for the Middle East. Yes. We have all seen what is happening yes. since last weekend. So yes. I have heard the Turkish president says, saying that Israel is a terror state. He had a conversation with the Russian president and asked him for uh, help and uh, for, for the Palestinians. Is this a role that Turkey is trying to play? We're not after playing roles. But uh, this goes to show, you know, the events of the past uh, week or so goes to go, go, go to show that you shouldn't, or we, we shouldn't be comfortable uh, with simmering or frozen conflicts. They can flare up any time. So uh, we need to have proactive diplomacy. We need to talk to each other, uh, and we need to predict trouble as it comes. It's a terrible, terrible thing that's happening over there. Uh, in, in, in Palestine. I uh, hope it doesn't boil over. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you, My ladies pleasure. and gentlemen. Good afternoon.